thank you for joining me for another episode of Intuition, Your First Sense. This is Vicki. I thought we would talk about the other senses. Even though the podcast is called Intuition, Your First Sense, it's done that and named that for a reason in that I believe that when we first come in as humans, intuition is our first sense. And then we become aware of all the other senses that we have. And I just felt like it was always put at the back and labeled number six, like it was the last one you got to after you considered all the others, except that it's always worked best for me if I put that one in first and then consider the information that's coming in through the other senses. So I thought it would be fun to go through these in a brief way and also connect it to your intuitive senses because a lot of this work in developing and opening up and learning how you're wired is actually just paying attention, being observational, being willing to connect the dots, if you will, between that non-physical world and the physical world. So that's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to start with touch. And in the intuitive world or in the metaphysical world or the sentient communications, this is actually called clairsentient. So being able to touch because we have an awareness through the sensations of our body and how it connects with our world, whether it's a shirt that it's your feeling or that essence of the person sitting next to you on the subway um, or if it's a sensation of the, the temperature in the in the environment where you are. Is it too hot? Is it too cold? Is this um, blanket scratchy or is it nice and soft? So the touch that we have physically connects to that clairsentient, which means clear feeling. So, hey, it works out well, right? And when you become aware of your environment and not just go through your day and take things for granted, you know, we do take some stuff for granted. And I feel like the more that we get in touch <laughs> with our other senses, the more our intuitive sense works because they all learn to collaborate a bit like an orchestra, right? If you have the different parts of your orchestra playing, a lot of the times, if you've ever participated in that, when I would play the clarinet section, it didn't always sound like anything. Like you couldn't really figure out all the time what the tune was because maybe horns had the melody or the flutes had it or percussion had it. But when you put it all together, well, you could tell what we were playing. And that's how our senses work. And if we let them all work together, it is amazing what you can pick up in your environment. A lot of the times when I'm out with people, when we were allowed to be out with people, um, but when I'd be with people and I would comment about, oh, did you see that person's brooch? Or, wow, they look sad. Or, um that car was adorable and it was just all these things in fl if seemingly fleeting passageways uh, and people be like, how do you pick all that up? And I'm like, well, I, when I had to figure out my intuition, I had to figure out all these other senses too, because otherwise it short circuits your brain, your motherboard. So, but once you start to actually pay attention, and I know this sounds counterintuitive, but the more you pay attention to your senses and learn how yours work, the quieter they become. And then sensations like that or observations or um, and your experience of your environment becomes that much richer. It becomes more vibrant and just like the, ener the air dances. So it does take a little bit of practice of being able to pay attention to everything in order for it to quiet down. But I think this could be the answer to people who have such active heads and, and worry systems and everything. Because I think a lot of the times that comes from avoidance and not paying attention. So if you would take on the challenge of paying attention to your touch, like you probably don't even realize that you reach for the your favorite pair of, let's face it these days, stretch pants or yoga pants uh, because of the way they fit or because they're soft 
or, you know, because they give you a little bit of room because you might have had a little too many snacks today. You may not even be aware of that. So start to be aware of what's impacting you, what you're feeling, how things um, translate to your brain. What are the messages that go through the biggest organ of your body, your skin? And how does that translate and how does it get into your brain? And then how does that translate to your intuitive sense of clairsentient? Well, when you're clairsentient, you quite literally pick up on other people's feelings, emotions, the energy in the room, the vibration of the land, the hilarity of nature, and all of that. And it can be a lot. I've been watching this show lately. It's called Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. And I am loving it. It was actually recommended by a client who said it reminds her of me (laughs) when she's watching the show. And the character that, besides it's a lovely show, the character that um, if you like musical numbers, I will preface it with that. I happen to love them. Um, But the character has to go through this new awareness of how much she's hearing and feeling and picking up in the world that she didn't have before. And I have to say the writers, the producers and everything are doing a brilliant job with this. I'm really enjoying it. The storyline is rich. The music is wonderful. Uh, And But they're really portraying what it can feel like to walk around in the world wide open, completely sentient, um, empathic, and picking up on things and how to navigate that. And I feel like this is such a wonderful example of a way that we can use our arts and our entertainment to learn that, hey, other people are walking around like that too. So when you're going through your your life, please pay attention to touch. And this can be one of the reasons that kids want their socks a certain way or they don't like those shoes. It's not all about the pinching. A lot of it, well, that you need to check on, but a lot of it has to do with how they're feeling their environment and it's just too much. Um, I know myself, I've put on a shirt and been like, no, Nope, not wearing this today. And not because of any sense of style, trust me, didn't get that gene, but because it just did not feel right. And maybe I didn't have time to check in. So touch being the first sense. No, intuition being the first sense, but touch the first one I'm talking about today, just to be clear. The next one would be sight. And I'm not doing this in any particular order. order. It's just how I wrote them down. With sight, eyes open, eyes closed, you have sight. So you have your two eyes that come from the human element, and then you have a third eye, your ajna, which is right between and slightly above your other two eyes. And that's your sight. That's your inner sight. That's your sight to the universe. That's your clairvoyance. So the the clear here is the voyance, the ability to see. And this one, a lot of people, when they are, they're developing their intuition, they want. Um, I'll caution you that on that because as somebody who is very clairvoyant, it's not always easy to handle. <laughs> and while it can be helpful and, yeah, it can cut right through a situation when you can see the scene playing out in, you, in front of you, it's hard on the brain because you end up being... It's like you're watching a movie overlay another movie and your physical brain. I don't think our physical brains are evolved enough to really handle all of this. They do the best they can. And I've always thought it would be fun to be in a CAT scan and do a reading and see or an MRI, MRI or, although you're not supposed to move and I do gesture, so that could be difficult, uh, while doing a reading just to see what lights up and everything. Your sight part of this, the clairvoyance, does work independent of your physical eyes, and yet there's a need for the conjunction of your physical eyes and your third eye. So sight being very important, and the way that you can connect with this and even develop your own intuitive sight is, again, to pay attention to what's going on in your immediate surroundings. And I don't mean in such a way that you're hyper vigilant. I mean that you're in observation of the beauty of the world, 
the beauty of connection, of nature, of being um, willing or and, and even being blessed to witness what's happening. And you can have this sight without having visual sight. You can have clairvoyance and have horrific heart, eyesight or even have no physical eyesight. The, it does not negate, that's a double negative, um, you can have clairvoyance without having great eyesight. Um, and funny story, I had the uh, the LASIK surgery done five years ago now, I believe. And I actually did have a little bit of a moment of panic going in. Not that I would lose my physical eyesight. I actually never questioned that because I had a whole level of trust that I was supposed to do it. <laughs> but I was a little concerned it would turn off my third eye. And I had to really tell myself and take some deep breaths while they were working on me to say, Vicky, stop. It has nothing to do with it. You can absolutely still have your clairvoyance, even if you couldn't see your surroundings. And it brought me a little bit of peace in the operating room. So the, uh, the more time you spend paying attention to and in observation of what's around you, you also build what I call the dictionary. And that's our own intuitive reference library. Each one of us has a different perception of how we see our world, the lens in which we look through it. So I can't tell you what your dictionary is. I can't tell you, like if you see clairvoyantly, for instance, when I see flannel clairvoyantly, I know I'm either looking at someone who wears a lot of flannel or loves to play checkers. That came about simply by sitting and paying attention and in sessions paying attention to what and how does flannel represent itself or rather that checkerboard pattern represent itself to me. And likely because my father wore a lot of flannel, it ended up being that reference. But by paying attention to what you're seeing in the world, what do you like? What don't you like? And remember, seeing is not all about sight. It's about how you're acknowledging your surroundings, the people in your world, the way you talk to yourself, your belief systems, how you see situations or how you see certain groups or a line of learning. So make sure that you don't become, here comes a really bad pun, so focused on what you're seeing in the very linear sense of sight, but you actually pay attention to the larger aspect of sight. And then that gives you insight to what you and how your whole system will work. So we can't just talk about intuition and not pay attention to our other senses. It's just not possible because they all have to work collaboratively. And honestly, why would we have them if they weren't meant to work collaboratively? Next one is smelling and taste. Of course, this is so subjective <laughs> because what might taste good to me may not taste good to others. I love asparagus. Some people don't care for it. So the idea of smell and taste tends to come under the category of clairgustus. So clear smelling, clear tasting. And I know there's another word and I always forget it. So we're going to stick with clairgustus for now. And the way that this can connect to your intuitive sense is think about savory and sweet, right? You pick up the different tastes by the taste buds in your mouth. And some people prefer the savory, some people prefer the sweet. Um, personally, the guy in my life, I don't know how he has any taste buds, be buds because everything is so hot, <laughs> so spicy, where I'm like, okay, but I prefer the cinnamons of the world and, you know, leaning a little bit more towards the sweet side, unless we're talking horseradish potato chips, because I love those too. But we each have a different area and, and a different favorite, really. And if you pay attention to that, you can actually use that in developing your own intuition and your own knowing and your sense, because you're also getting to know yourself. And I'm not talking about necessarily the the foods that we use to avoid 
emotions or situations because you might think that sweets are your favorite, but when you actually start really feeling things out and um, paying attention as you're eating something, you may actually find that you don't necessarily like the lettuce you've been eating every week or or kale. No matter how much you tell me that kale is good for me, I'm not doing it. It's just not, I'm not doing it. It feels awful to my body and nobody should do, have to do that much chewing to get a vegetable down. It's just, we're not rabbits. Like leave it to the hoss and pfeffers. So pay attention to what is it that you appreciate? Are you someone who likes smooth textures? Are you someone who prefers the crunchy? Um, do you want the chewy? Like if you're offering me any kind of sweet, I prefer caramels or gummy bears, non-gelatin, um, but things of that nature. <laughs> Whereas the chocolates and the candies and stuff like that, you can keep them. I don't really need them, um, much to the consternation of my friend Kelly. But this is why we've determined we could live together because I like the candies she doesn't and she likes the candies I don't. See, it's all about knowing your environment and what's going to work best for you. So when you're contemplating and you're thinking about things, don't you remember like the smells of your childhood or the things that bring such a joy? When I walked outside just now um, before doing this, I went for a walk to kind of clear the cobwebs and someone was brewing coffee on the first floor of my building and oh my goodness, did it smell good because I haven't really been able to tolerate it for about a week now just because of some tummy stuff. And I love coffee. So that smell, what it brought me was a joy. I didn't have to drink the coffee. I took that joy out on my walk with me and incorporated it in with the smell of the the fresh air because we're at about 30 degrees Fahrenheit right now, which is perfect. Just appreciation of your lungs and oxygen and everything because it's cool enough to feel refreshing but not cold enough to snap anything off your body and it so when you're paying attention to these likes and dislikes you can again start to build your dictionary you can start to bring in more of your intuitive sense and I don't know if you've ever smelled like cigarettes and no one's around or sugar cookies and there's no one present. Those are the ways that the spirit world connects with us and it can translate to your physical senses. But if you're not in touch with your physical senses, you're not really going to pick up on the subtle messages because very rarely is communication from yourself, from your soul, from spirit, from those who have crossed, very rarely is it loud. It's usually so subtle. And I think that's meant so that we pause and we take in and we observe and we have reverence for. So Claire Gustas, if you're someone who gets a sensation of, um, I remember one time one of my friends was pregnant and I kept getting her cravings and I would taste the craving and they aren't things that I necessarily like. <laughs> and I'd be like, will you please just go get whatever it is you're craving? Because not only is it coming into my world, I'm actually tasting it. Or you have to start craving things I actually like, but then I don't want to go eat them. So <laughs> it's just a fun way that that can show up too. And the last one I'll talk about is hearing. So being clairaudient, being able to hear things, and the show that I was talking about, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, it, it she hears music. She hears it, the thoughts and feelings of other people get translated into music for her. And, and it's fun because she doesn't always know the songs, which I feel like would be my world too. But so far, I've known every song that they've played, and I've binge watched it. And so the clairaudient part can be really challenging because I remember in one of the episodes, and yes, so spoiler alert here, she has, they, she and one of her friends, Mo, who I love, I feel like Mo is just the epitome of love. Um, and I, <laughs> he, he was saying to her, 
put on your uh, put on these noise canceling headphones, and that should help. And it turned out it didn't because this is coming from within her energy field. She thinks it's coming from within her head, but it's actually coming from within the energy field. And I remember thinking when I was watching that, that, oh, honey, that is not going to work. And then when she realizes that doesn't work, it must be coming from within inside me. Um, there was, you know, this shift within her that, whoa, I better figure this out. And I remember that because that's exactly how I felt in the beginning of my intuitive journey. And a lot of people who come to me when I say, wow, it's been really loud lately or overwhelming, huh? And it's a reflection of what they're feeling. And with Claire audience, it can sound, for some people, it does sound like it's outside their body. But the majority of us experience it inside our head, almost in your thinking voice. Like if you take a moment right now and think to yourself, my name is. So that voice that you heard that in is a lot of the times, like 90% of the time, how a clairaudient message will come through. So it's very challenging to discern, is this my voice or is this someone else's? The beauty of it being a spirit message is they'll only give you stuff that's supportive, that will help you. You will not get a message that's derogatory. And that doesn't mean you won't get a message that's not sad, but you won't get a message that's derogatory or, you know, um, I can't think of another word right now. So we're going with derogatory. So clear audience is wonderful. It's beautiful. It's the last one I developed and it still sometimes feels like you ever have Bluetooth headphones and they cut out halfway. They're like in and out. Um, and like the, the signal gets just, the sound gets very choppy. That's how my clear audience works most of the time. I'd much prefer to feel it or to see it because that's a stronger sense for me. But if I want to be multifaceted, I have to work on these things too. So when you, and to be clear, working on and developing your intuition is a lifelong thing. It's not something you do for a week and then it's there and then you just run with it. It has to be it has to be respected and worked on just like any other muscle that you want to develop. So when you're practicing with the Claire audience, learn to hear nature. I don't know a better way to tune your Claire audience than being in nature and listening to it. If you live in a city, don't worry about it. Listen to the sounds of the city. Listen to them, but really listen to them. Really pay attention to them. And the different tones that are in people's uh, car horns, the sounds of the sirens going by. If you happen to have free space, and I would highly recommend it, listen to the different birds that are out or the, the bugs that are making noise at night or the frogs, um, the sound of the wind going through the trees. You know, what does a lawnmower in the distance really sound? Pause, take your time, let it sink in, get to know the notes, have it be an experiential process for you. I promise the world will keep spinning while you're doing this. I promise you. If you want to develop that first sense of intuition, you have to be willing to honor, respect, and and pay attention to all of your physical senses as well. It just has to work together. And it's pretty impressive when they do because then it works pretty, it works so fast. It's like lightning speed. And I had somebody describe me as a super synthesizer. And until he said that, I didn't really think of it that way. But then I was like, yeah, that's what it feels like. You know, one impression in front of me is like 600 messages going through my system. And therefore, I have to be tuned in enough to pick up the messages that are necessary or that are important. And that's what pausing to do all of these things will do. And I have a meditation on my website. All my meditations are $1.99, down, instant download. And I have a meditation on there that's about the senses. And if you'd like to uh, 
to head on over there. It's vickybaird.com forward slash shop. And it could help. They're very short, very short. And I hope that this has helped you to appreciate who you are because we learn about our senses, but we don't always stop and and we aren't always grateful for them, I feel. I feel like we could be more in awe of how this whole system puts together, just how the brain processes all of them at the same time without you having to pay attention to them. I mean, isn't that amazing? So give yourself some time, some practice, some consciousness around how to connect with these different senses. And if you're playing with a little kid or you have them in your life, ha- have them practice too. If you're not working, with, well, even if you are working with sight, you know, close your eyes, cover it up. What can you pick up in your environment that you may have missed because another sense was most prevalent at the time. Give them each their own their own respect and their time to shine. And it will strengthen your intuitive abilities, I promise you. Well, if you do the work. <laughs> There's no magic wands in this. So thank you very much. And I will see you with my third eye in the next episode. Thank you for listening to Intuition, Your First Sense. I'm so grateful to have you here. It's like a gift to me every week. And speaking of gifts, did you know that you can purchase gift certificates on my website, vickybaird.com, for yourself, for others? You can purchase coaching packages and gift those out. So please head on over to vickybaird.com and purchase your electronic gift certificates.